Welcome to section 3 of the IDEA workbook, Accounts Payable Audit and Fraud Investigation. We will cover the risks associated with accounts payable that can be addressed by computer audit procedures and what tests can help address those risks. Potential risks include payments made to unauthorized suppliers, payments that are made to individuals or employees, unauthorized premiums given to suppliers, invoices that are paid late, invoices that are paid on irregular dates, invoices that are processed twice, payments that are made in a way to be undetected by audits, and items that are missing. Potential tests will include mechanical accuracy and valuation, such as checking transaction totals to the balance on each account, analysis by stratifying the size of payments and extracting any exceptionally high payments, exception testing for existence and validity, to identify payments to unauthorized suppliers by matching the payments and authorized suppliers list, and gaps and duplicates to test for missing items or gaps in the check number sequence. The Chief Financial Officer of Bright Ideas Incorporated is concerned that a particular member of the Accounts Payable Department is living beyond his means and that the pattern of payments does not correlate to that of previous years. He has asked dynamic accountants to perform a special review of the Accounts Payable system to test for any irregularities. The following data files will be used for this exercise. Accounts payable history for the year January 1, 2015 through December 31st, 2015, and the supplier master file. Formatting for the data is explained on page 95 and 96. The audit program is explained on page 97, and we will begin on page 98. First, go ahead and open IDEA. and we will create a project. To create a project, click the Home tab and then from the Projects group, click Create. Create a managed project called Accounts Payable and then click OK. Accounts Payable becomes the active project, closing any previously active projects. From the Home tab in the Projects group, click Properties to change the Project Properties. When the Project Properties dialog appears, end with the following. Report Name Accounts Payable Investigation, Report Period January 1st, 2015 through December 31st, 2015. Please be sure to copy the following data files that came with the workbook, acc.pay2015.txt and supplier.xls to my idea documents, idea projects, accounts payable, source files.ilb. This is the default location within a project to store any source files. Next we'll import the accounts payable data. From the home tab in the import group, click desktop to access the import assistant. Select text and click the Browse button to navigate to and select the file accpay2015.txt from the Source Files folder within the Project folder. Click Open on the Select File dialog box, then click Next. Once the data has been selected, the Import Assistant will try to determine the data file type. The following screen is displayed and the delimited format is correctly identified. Click Next to proceed. The Import Assistant will try to determine the field separators and text encapsulators for the file. Accept the defaults and click Next to proceed. The Import Assistant Field Details screen is used to define each field's name and details in turn, including identifying which fields or areas should not be included. title the first, SUPPNO, which will be referencing the supplier number. These details are located on page 105 of the IDEA version 10 workbook. Next we will title the field name Payee for the second field. The third will be Invoice. The fourth will be 
INV underscore date. Make sure to select this as a date type. And display the correct date mask. YYYY MMDD. Click to the next field. The next field will be our amount field. It will be of type numeric and we will give it two decimals. Click next. The sixth field we will select not to import because it is blank. To the next field. This will be our check field, also of numeric type. We will make sure it has zero decimals. The next field, this will be our pay underscore date field. Be sure it has a type of date and we will also give it a date mask. YYYY MMDD. And our final field will be our payment authorization initials titled AUTH. It will be a character field. Click next to continue. We won't add any fields and we'll go ahead and generate the field statistics by clicking the option available and in the database name box we will enter accounts payable and click finish. Next we'll import uh, the Microsoft Excel worksheet. From the Home tab in the Import group, click Desktop. Select Microsoft Excel and click the Browse button to navigate to and select the file. Select Supplier.xls, click Open, and click Next. The importer system will display a preview of the data and a list of any worksheets defined within the file. Select the address worksheet in the Select Sheets to Import box. Select the first row as field names option. In the file name box, select the default name and enter Authorized Supplier. Click OK. The Authorized Supplier address database will be imported, opened, and selected as the active database. Next we'll generate the field statistics. Select the accounts payable database as the active database, either by double clicking on the file name in the file explorer or selecting the open file. Click the field statistics link in the properties window. The field statistics will be displayed. Put the date in the field type box to study the information. Note in particular the earliest date and the latest date statistics. From the amount field, you can see that there are two zero items. These are unexpected and should be extracted and investigated. From the date, we see that there are no missing invoice dates. Click data to return to the main window. Select the authorized supplier database and generate the field statistics for it as well. Click on the field statistics link in the properties window and examine the field statistics for the authorized supplier database.
ensure that your totals agree, and click Data, and return to the Accounts Payable Database. We'll select a control total for each data file, select control total, select amount, and click OK. The control total amount of $34,145,389 should be displayed. Select authorized supplier and create the control total for it as well. The total of $30,202,660.57 should be displayed. We'll close the Authorized Supplier Database. Next, we will stratify the payment amounts. From the Analysis tab in the Categorize group, click Stratification. In the Fields to Stratify, select Amount. And in the Fields to Total on box, also select Amount. Confirm the increment is set to 10,000. Click the first row of the spreadsheet area, which will fill in with 0 to 10,000. Click and drag down to row 10. The bands will automatically fill with the increment. Then change the increment to 50,000 and complete the final two bands listed below on page 121. Do not check the Create Database option and click OK. The results of the stratification are displayed in a new stratification results output of the database window. Inspect the results output for the amount field. To preview the stratification report, click the Print Preview button on the Operations toolbar. Close the Print Preview screen by clicking the Close button in the top right corner to return to the results output. Click the View Result Chart button. And you can select 3D or 2D to select the preferred view. To return to the output, click the View the Result Chart button again. As we would expect, there are a large number of low-value payments tapering off to a small number of high-value payments. However, there is an exceptionally high number of payments in the $70,000 to $80,000 band. We can drill down on the detailed records that comp comprise any strata by clicking on it and selecting Display Records. If you want to redo the stratification task, perhaps to change some of the stratum ranges, you do not have to start over. Click Rerun Task on the Analysis tab to change any of the intervals or increments. Return to the results output by clicking the Cancel button. Next, we'll return to the data view by clicking Data in the Properties. As a result of the analysis, we identified unusually high numbers of payments between $70,000 and $80,000. Using the Accounts Payable Database, we'll extract all high and unusual payments. Select Accounts Payable Database and select Direct Extraction by clicking on the relevant button in the Analysis tab. In the field name, enter Unusual and High Payments. Click on the Equation Editor button. The Equation Editor will appear and is used to enter the required equation. Amount is greater than 70,000 and amount is less than 80,000 or amount 
is greater than 100,000. Once the equation has been entered, check the syntax by clicking the validate button. Click validate and exit. Click OK to run the extraction. There should be 87 records totaling 6 million 850,932.26 cents. Close the unusual and high payments database. Next we'll search for payments with cash in the payee name. From the analysis tab in the extract group, Click direct. Change the file to cash in pay name. Click on the equation editor. Click on the equation editor button and then access the at functions through the menu on the right hand side. Select the at ISINI function. We will insert cash in quotes and then the at STRIP function with payee as the property within it. Once you have entered the equation, Check the syntax and exit the equation editor by clicking the validate and exit button. Do not run the extraction yet. Next we will check for round sum payments. Click on the second extraction line in the direct extraction dialog box and note that a default name is supplied for a second extraction. Change the file name to round sum amounts. Click the equation editor button. We'll extract all round sum amounts in the thousands by using the following equation. Amount modulus 1000 equals zero. Select the mod button to insert the percentage symbol in the equation. The equation will result in items where the remainder when dividing by 1000 is zero. Click the validate and exit button and do not run the extraction yet. Next we'll check for payments authorized by manager HMV. Change the file name to authorized by HMV. Click the equation editor button. Extract all payments authorized by HMV using the following equation. The at upper function and the at strip function with the auth field as the property within the strip function. Outside the function, add the equal sign and put the authorizer HMV in quotes. Once the equation has been entered, Check the syntax and exit by clicking the validate and exit button. Again, do not run the extractions yet. Next we'll test for payments processed on a Sunday. Change the file name to Sunday Payments. Click the equation editor button. Enter the equation using the equation editor at DOW with pay date field as the property within and you'll set that equal to 1. Once the equation has been entered, check the syntax and exit by clicking the validate and exit button. Click OK to run all four extractions with a single pass through the database. 
Note that the cache and payee name database is the active database. Other databases must be opened from the file explorer. These databases show that many are authorized by HMV and VST and that payee name is not consistent with the supplier number. There are many zero value checks and many greater than the maximum authorization limit of 20,000 for HMV and on Sunday 25 were authorized by HMV. We'll right click and close all the databases. Next we'll run the Benford's Law Analysis. From the Analysis tab in the Explorer group, click Benford's Law. First, we'll open the Advanced menu. Because the database that we are working with is only 999 records, We'll have to adjust the settings because Benford's Law is regularly set at 1000. Click OK to proceed. Select the amount field as the field to analyze. Accept the other default options to include values that are positive, show boundaries, mean absolute distribution, and perform all seven analysis types. Then click OK to perform the analyses. Benford results window becomes active. The other databases must be opened from the File Explorer window. Open the Benford First Digit.imd file. From the Analysis tab in the Categorize group, click Chart to graph the data. In the Y fields list box, select Actual. In the X axis title field, enter Digit Sequence. In the Y axis title field, enter Count. In the chart title field, enter amount dash first digit dash positive. Then click OK. The chart data results output becomes active. The first digit graph shows a spike in the digit 7 results. This is a high level test. This is a test of goodness of fit to see if the first digit actual proportions conform to Benford's law. The first digit test is an overall test of reasonableness. Click the data link in the properties window to return to the Benford's first digit database that was created as part of this analysis. The difference field shows the difference between the expected occurrences of the digits and the actual occurrences of the digits. When the difference field is indexed in descending order, the digit 7 results show the largest positive difference. Close the Benford First Digit Database. Then open the Accounts Payable Database and select Benford in the Results Area of the Properties window. To view the first two digit graph, click on the button in the Results Toolbar. The 7, 9, 7, 6, and 7, 5 two digit combination spikes are clearly viewable in this graph. Look at the transactions that comprise the 792 digit combination by clicking on the graph and selecting display records. Notice the number of transactions just under the $80,000 approval limit. Of the 22 transactions that make up the 792 digit combination, 17 are between $79,000 and $80,000. Each of the payables clerks authorized some of the 17 transactions, but HMV was responsible for the bulk of these transactions having authorized 8 out of 17.
Then open the Benford first three digit database. The first three digits test is a highly focused test that will give the analyst relatively smaller sections due to abnormal duplication. Index the difference field in descending order. The 750 digit combination has the largest negative difference. We'll right click the database accounts payable and select close all databases. Next we'll test for duplicate payments. Open the accounts payable database. From the Analysis tab, click Duplicate Key, then Detection. There are two options, Output Duplicate Records or Output Records Without Duplicates. For this test, select Output Duplicate Records to get a database containing any records that are duplicated. Click the Key button and select the following fields. SUPPNO in ascending order and Amount in descending order. Then click OK. Do not specify a criteria for the test and enter the resultant file name as duplicate payments. Then click OK in the duplicate key detection dialog box to run the test and view the resultant database of duplicate payments. There are five duplicate records shown, including three payments of 75,000 to supplier M100 and two payments of 145.50 to supplier P007. Close the duplicate payments database. To test for supplier numbers with multiple payee names, from the analysis tab, click duplicate key, then exclusion. In the Duplicate Key Exclusion dialog box, enter the following settings. Fields to match, SUPPNO, field name that must be different, payee, and file name, SUPPNO, multiple payees. Click OK to perform the test. There are 120 records where the same supplier number has different payee names. These records total $4,524,529.75. Then close the SUPPNO multiple payees database. That concludes the introduction to Section 3, Accounts Payable Audit and Fraud Investigation. Enjoy the rest of the analysis, and we will see you in Section 4. Thank you.